So, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, your doctor Ness is here again. We are here with the re uh, uh, remaining topic of aortic regurgitation. Today we will cover the whole echocardiographic findings, the indication of stress echocardiography, the uh, transesophageal echocardiography in AR, and the indication of cath, what to see, or what how to do the cath, and what to see in the cath of uh, patients of aortic regurgitation. And in the last, we will just briefly discuss about the advanced. Uh, like uh, technology and the uh, technologies uh, such as uh, CMR and CD scan uh, in the patients of aortic regurgitation. So, without wasting time, we will move towards the echocardiographic finding. In the first view, when you do the echocardiography, obviously you know that the first is the, the the screening view of our echocardiography is always and always the most of the time always uh, uh, <laughs> it's most of the time it's parasternal long axis view. So that's why I, I, I here the mention just to make you understand, guys, uh, easy uh, e in, 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 in an easier form. I have uh, drawn a picture of parasternal long axis view here, which is which is showing that it, it shows that there are the jet which is coming from aorta to the LV in the diastole because mitral valve is open. If the mitral valve is open, it may, if the mitral valve is open in this picture, it means that your ha your heart is in. Diastole and there ideally there should not be a jet coming from aorta to LV uh, If it is coming it means that your patient has significant AR Then you put the color on it and obviously you will appreciate a jet of AR and which is which is uh, drawn by me over here So uh, in the first look what you have to see obviously for in the first look in the 2d uh, when uh, picture uh, shows in in the echocardiograph in the echo machine you have to look for the cause and what would be the cause obviously it could be the rheumatic fever in the rheumatic fever the leaflets would be thickened and it would be like calcified uh, so it would have AR so it could be I if the well if the if the, if the uh, valves are very clear but might they are perforated having uh, the vegetation over it and something is hanging over it it could be thrombus it could be vegetation so you can think about that it could be the eye or it could be something else which is which is developing the AR if there is any space occupying lesion which I have uh, drawn here usually uh, in the normal echocardiography you won't find these sort of the space occupying lesions if there are the space occupying lesions in the in the uh, margins of the aorta in the TUE or the trans thoracic echo usually these are appreciated on the trans esophageal echocardiography but if they if, if, if you are appreciating those on the trans thoracic echocardiography so it is easy to say uh, uh, in your patient that it, this AR is might because of the infective endocarditis so you can diagnose your patient as a, 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 a infective endocarditis if you are diagnosing it as the aortic dissection so you can appreciate any flap over here like this or like this so these flaps can indicate you that your patient have the aortic dissection secondary uh, AR secondary to the aortic dissection or might you would have a large aorta in the marfan or the bicuspid aortic valve so you can easily diagnosed or easily make a diagnosis of your patient with the AOR that uh, and uh, by looking the uh, uh, two dimensional uh, picture on the echocardiography machine of, of the patient of your AR so uh, the the whole discussion shows that by looking uh, the uh, the 2d images of uh, AR patients in your AR patients you can appreciate and you can even tell them a definitive diagnosis uh, by taking the findings to uh, 2D uh, views. After that, obviously, uh, after diagnosing it, after putting color on it, you have to quantify the ER. Because uh, if anything is coming in the diastole from aorta to LV, you can label it as an AR. Then it, this AR can be mild, moderate, severe, and very severe. So how we could uh, quantify it? So you have to remember the values of the severe. If it is anything less than is, obviously it would be intermediate and it would be less severe. But anything which is more than it, it would be severe. So I would suggest you guys that just remember or just learn by heart the values of severe AR. That what are those? There are the six parameters and the fives are very important two are related to the jet and obviously they're all are almost related to the jet but two are obviously related to the jet uh, jet uh, jet quantity such as the narrowest portion of that jet is known as vena contracta 
द नैरोस्ट पोर्शन ऑफ द जेट इज नोन एज वीना कॉन्ट्रेक्टा इफ दिस वीना कॉन्ट्रेक्टा इज मोर देन पॉइंट सिक्स देन इट मीन दैट योर पेशेंट हैज सिवियर ए आर एंड इफ द If the jet which is coming from that orifice, like orifice which is open during the diastole, ideally there should not be any orifice during diastole in the aortic valve. If there is that orifice and that orifice is more than 0.3 centimeter per square, it means that it means that your patient has severe AR. So two things depicts in the AR. One is the vena contracta and the ERO, which shows that your patient has. Has severe AR when you quantify it. Now three more things we have. One is the jet width. If the jet width is jet width, this this is the jet width. If the jet width is more than sixty percent of, like the LVOT, like uh, like the jet width is more than sixty percent of the LVOT, it means that your patient has severe AR. So it is very important by looking. Uh, you can visually assess this as well, but obviously there are so many measurements and the and the calipers are available in the echo machine by which you can quantify the uh, these jet widths of that AR. So if the jet width is more than sixty percent, then you can diagnose it as a AR. Number two thing is volume. How much volume is coming back to the LV? If that the volume is more than sixty ml, if the volume is more than sixty ml. Which is coming from aorta to the LV back into the diastole, you would label it as a AR severe AR. And if that and what is the fraction? Okay, jet fraction. Then uh, regurgitant fraction. The, if the that regurgitant fraction is more than fifty percent, then again uh, it it would uh, be labeled as a severe AR. Now uh, a, a question obviously would be arise uh, would be uh, arose in your uh, horizon. <coughs> would be raised in your minds that what is regurgitant fraction so the regurgitant fraction is the uh, fraction is the percentage of regurgitant volume which is coming back into the lv it means that regur if you, like the whole stroke volume coming back uh, like going towards aorta so the volume which is coming back towards lv it would be some percent like if you are sending 100% to the aorta and if the 40% is coming back so it means that your patient has not severe ar but if you are sending 100% of the stroke volume like 100% of the volume from lv to aorta and if the 50% of that volume which you have sent to the body from lv to aorta is coming back to the lv it means that your patient has severe ar it means that if you are sending 10 people to a shop and if the six people gone to the shop and only four can bake it means that your patient has not severe ar but if you if you will send 10 people to the shop and in, uh, from which six will come back or five will come back it means that your patient has severe ar same is the condition if the 50% of the stroke volume comes come back to the lv into the diastole which you sent into the systole into the aorta from lv is known as severe ar i hope that i have might made myself clear that the volume which you sent into the systole towards the aorta if 50% of that volume comes back to into the lv it means that your patient has Severe AR. If the fifty percent is not coming back to the LV, it means that your patient does not have severe AR. So it is a very important modality which describe which 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 depicts and which describes the severity of AR. Okay. So the uh, these are the five para five uh, parameters which describes the severity of AR. One is vena contracta. Jet width. These both are related with the uh, uh, Doppler jet uh, parameters, and these three are other equations which we drive through the uh, the uh, by further doing the echo echocardiography. So just you remember five things. Number one is vena contracta, width, ERO, volume, and fraction. These are the five things. And the sixth one, which which usually comes with the severe AR, is hollow diastolic flow reversal. If usually flow goes. in uh, systole like this and in diastole also there would not be a flow reversal towards the lv if there if there is any flow reversal from aorta 
टू एल वी इन दायसरी विच यू कैन एप्रिशिएट इन टू दब कोस्टल व्यूज बाय लुकिंग दी एब नॉर्मल एटा और सुप्रा कोस्टल व्यूज by looking the uh, uh, the uh, ascending or arch of aorta you will if you are appreciating the flow reversal uh, in a uh, hollow diastolic flow reversal or the flow reversal in the in the diastole it shows that your patient has severe ar because usually there would not be a hollow diastolic flavor uh, uh, flow into the diastole oh okay what are other condition in which you can get the flow diastolic flow reversal but not other thing if your patient is Diastolic flow reversal, but there is nothing with the aortic valve. Your patient would not have vena contracta, ERO, volume fraction, and you, even not a jet is coming from aorta to LV. It means that your patient does not have AR. But your patient have might have these three to four things which can have uh, have this these hollow diastolic flow reversal, such as ruptured sinus oval valve, left to right uh, uh, patent ductus arteriosus, AV fistula formation in the upper limb. and aortic dissection with flow reversal in the false lumen so these are causes which usually ask in the examination that what are other causes of hollow diastolic flow reversal uh, if your patient has not ar on in the echocardiography so these are the things now okay uh, i hope that i have made myself clear and it would be very crisp and short the echo echo findings just remain uh, just uh, learned by heart these five things and keep these few things in your mind and the the the, the, AR, the echocardiography of ar is done that's all now move towards the toe obviously as i told you that most of the time space occupying lesions abscesses and all these things are more visible in the uh, infective and uh, in the uh, trans esophageal echocardiography of the patients of infective endocarditis in ar okay why because the aorta is a posterior structure so it is more nearer towards the esophagus so the trans esophageal echocardiography helps us to diagnose the space occupying lesion the aortic root abscesses uh and uh, by cuspid aortic valve if you are if you are interested and if you if if if, if anything is not appreciating on uh, trans thoracic echocardiography you can go for the for the by cuspid aortic for you can go towards the trans esophageal esophageal echocardiography for the by cuspid aortic valve and the subvalvular membranes because these are again more visible on the trans esophageal echocardiography now what when to do and how to do the stress uh, echo the indication of the stress echocardiography in the ar is obviously if the results are equivocal and you are not confirmed that your patient has a severe ar or not then you have to give the stress to patient and and might your patient would not have a symptoms during rest or the uh, ordinary condition but your patient can can like uh, complain of uh, shortness of breath or uh, easy fatigability during extraordinary conditions or during the exertion then you can do the stress echocardiography to unmask the ar so stress echocardiography is another indication for equivocal features and all those patients who are asymptomatic on the rest or ordinary conditions but on extraordinary condition they complain for the uh, Uh, a shortness of breath and you are suspecting ar so and the contractile reserve we have discussed uh, in detail the contractile reserve in our lectures of uh, uh, aortic stenosis so i would uh, um, suggest you guys please go and watch those lectures but just i want to add one line over here that contractile reserve is nothing but just to give the uh, prognosis of the patient if you are going for the aortic valve replacement so contractile uh, contractile reserve is most of the time important in those patients who have a low ejection fraction we will discuss all these things the treatment of ar okay now the important thing is the angiographic findings and if you are going for the if like uh, usually we do not do the angiography in the ar patient because the uh, the latest modalities and the latest machine can can then i mean the strain echo now now can tell you that your patients are very initial form of the ar and they can be treated because their lv is getting down so uh, it is very less likely nowadays that you are going for the uh, uh, like you are uh, going towards angiography for the ar but because because but yes you can go if you are doing like anything uh, lv angiogram or aortogram for any for for anything or like if you have equivocal findings and the cat is only option to diagnose ar this then what then you can go and for the theoretical purpose you should know that what findings you can get during the uh, cath of ar patient so there there are two things which you need to see in uh, or to quantify the ar in the cath one is the lv opacification and number two is rate of clearance in the mild ar like mild or less than mild the, there would be the faint and incomplete opacification of the 
LV and there will be rapid clearance of LV in, in the on the same beat. So if you will just appreciate if you will do the aortogram, you will appreciate that there is something coming fr from aorta to LV and it will be uh, it it will not completely opacify the LV and it will clearly uh, or easily clear uh, will be will be cleared by the blood in the next beat. So if there would be the intermediate or 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 like uh, mild to moderate. Uh, uh, AR then there would be a faint but complete opacification of LV and it will be it will be uh, uh, cleared rapidly by the next beat or the blood in the next beat. Okay, now, now moderate to severe. If if your patient has moderate to severe AR, then there would be the equally opacification of LV up uh, to the aorta like the opacification of aorta and LV will be equal and their clearance would be intermediate. It would not be rapid. And if your patient has a very severe or severe AR, then the, the opacification of this uh, LV would be more than aorta if you are doing aortogram and clearance would not be in the same beat. It would take two or three beats to clear this LV uh, after giving injection into the aorta. So it shows that your patient has very severe AR. Okay, but for the proper quantification for these values, obviously you need to do what? You need to do the uh, Doppler echocardiography or the echo echocardiography to take all these values. So I hope that I have made myself clear. This was the AR. This is not difficult, but you have to make concepts. You have to uh, learn by heart all these things. You have to write it down and uh, read it again and again just to just to remember these numbers because these numbers are very equal, uh, very important, and these numbers are almost as same as as uh, uh, the, uh, those were in, uh, in, in MR. So I would suggest you guys that in the same page you would write MR and AR and these values and you have to uh, like compare those values and learn by heart and uh, discuss with your peers or colleagues. The important thing is that you should you should understand that what is this regurgitant volume and where it comes from what is this vena contractor this is a narrowest portion what is ero that is the ero from where the uh, jet is coming out what is the width this is a width which is covering the lvot what is the fraction fraction is the volume which we use send to the aorta and it's coming back into the diastole into the lv and what is the volume that is the volume uh, obviously volume is nothing volume is like a liquid any liquid any blood coming from aorta to lv if it is more than 60 ml you will label it as a severe ar so just remember these names, the numbers and the concept behind these names. Take care at the last as we do uh, subscribe my channel and uh, press the bell button for the future updates. Spread this knowledge, spread this word as much as you can. Share these videos with your friends and with your teachers, with your colleagues, with your peers. And remember me in, remember me in your prayers. Thank you. It's your Dr. Nas. Allah Hafiz.